Hello and welcome to another video. Now as a photographer and videographer, I know it's really important that I should be backing up my data and making sure it's safe. But like many of you out there, I've tended to rely on these things, external hard drives, and have never really taken it that seriously. But as I'm starting to get into the tens of terabytes of data, I really know that I should be doing more to look after it. If a client asks for a photo in a few years time, I need to make sure that I can go back and access that data. Now there's an old saying that says there's two things guaranteed in life and that's death and taxes. But I think we can add a third one to that and that is that we'll get a hard drive fail at some point. So by now we should all be taking better care of our data and making sure that we have that data backed up. So what are some of the options out there? Well there's plenty to choose from, there's cloud storage, backing up data in several places, all of those kind of things. But one thing that we should all be aware of by now is something called NAS, which is Network Attached Storage. Now don't worry if you don't know what that is, we'll be going through that in detail. And over the course of the next few videos, I'll be breaking down the importance of backing up data, ideas such as RAID storage, and obviously going into what Network Attached Storage is as well. But for today, I wanted to introduce you to one of the first key parts of Kit, and that's the actual Network Attached Storage device itself. All it is, is basically a piece of computer hardware with multiple drives in it that back up from one drive to another so that if you have one disk fail, you've actually got that data recoverable from another disk. And that's all it is. The NAS itself is simply hard drives on a network that you can access from any computer in the household, office, and some even off-site from other places so that you've got that data accessible. But what I wanted to show you today was the drive that I'm using, which is a QNAP TS453B, filled with <laughs> Seagate Iron Wolf drives, and we'll be going through what all of that is. Now the unboxing is just to walk around the device and get you used to some of the key things that these can do. So let's start taking a look around it. The device itself comes with the Intel Celeron processor. This model came with 4GB of RAM, but it is expandable to 8GB. This is important as we can basically see the NAS as a small computer for managing all of your data. However, in certain circumstances, it can be used like a computer anyway. It's also important to remember that NASes are commonly used as multimedia servers. Many people set up features such as Plex to manage all of their multimedia. However, we're going to be looking very closely from a photographer and videographer point of view. So we won't be able to touch on all of the features and functions, but it's very useful knowing that they're there. When you first unwrap the TS453B, it's clear that QNAP have put some thought into this. Knowing that many people will use it as a home server, it's clearly designed to suit any room and looks great. The drive bays are beautifully hidden behind the front case, and the blue accent on the side makes this look like a special piece of kit. On the front you'll find some key features such as a digital display, SD card reader and USB 3 for direct attach, a key feature that we'll discuss in more detail in a later video. The first thing that we want to do with the new NAS is load drives and it couldn't be simpler we simply remove the front cover to reveal the drive bays. The bays themselves simply slide in and out and are also hot swappable, meaning that you can change a drive on the hop. They are also toolless, so when loading a new drive, you don't need to worry about screws and screwdrivers. At the back of the device, we'll find yet more key connectivity, including two HDMI ports, four USB 3 ports, and two gigabit LAN ports. The huge amount of connectivity make it perfect for multiple devices on one network. The two HDMI ports make it brilliant as a multimedia server. The PCIe expansion slot at the top can allow for a range of different functions, including the space for the QM2 M.2 SSD for 10 gigabit expansion, a 10 gigabit network expansion card or a wireless network card. The NAS also comes with all the peripherals that you need to get started, including a handy remote for those using it for multimedia functions. 
although not necessary, I decided to add a network switch and opted for a TP-Link option. Possibly the most crucial part to any NAS setup is the drives that you decide to use and it's well worth spending a bit of time to research what's the best option for you. It's highly recommended to use NAS rated drives as they are built for this purpose and after much research I decided on the Seagate Iron Wolf range. We'll look at the drives again in a later video but for now we needed to get them installed. Thanks to the clever design of the QNAP this couldn't be simpler. You simply take out the drive tray, insert the drive and then locate the plastic lugs into the side that hold the drive secure then it's simply a case of sliding it back into the NAS. The four bays are loaded from left to right and it's simply a case of repeating the process for each drive depending on how many drives you're using. Once you're finished you add the cover to the front and you're done. With all the drives in place, now it's time to go through the installation process and again, it couldn't be simpler. Simply plug in the network cable, add the power cable and then turn the NAS on and follow the easy instructions. As the NAS boots for the first time, it'll take a few minutes, but this is a good opportunity to look through the easy to follow instructions on the software. It's safe to say that QNAP have really put some thought into this process and with the easy to follow instructions on screen, it's not a daunting task at all. The QFinder Pro software is a breeze to navigate through and there's plenty of resources on hand should you have any questions. One of the slightly more difficult tasks is deciding which RAID setup is best for you. Now we will be covering this in a later video, so if you're unsure, hold fire for that and we'll go through all the details. However, during the setup process, you are given a variety of options. The truth is, if you're looking at NAS as an option, you've probably already decided which is the best for you. So going through the installation process shouldn't be too tasking. Once you've committed, you let the software take over again, and there's no other technical bits for you to worry about. The software takes over, the hardware does what it needs to do, and then you're pretty much done. I was amazed at how simple the process was and not being the most technically minded person this was a big fear to me before I got into using network attached storage but I've got to say it was a breeze to go through. After one quick firmware update the NAS was ready to use and it was time to get saving my data and I felt so much better knowing that it was being backed up correctly. So that's the QNAP. It's a really beautiful piece of kit that does exactly what it says on the tin and I haven't had any issues with it so far so I'm really pleased with it. Going forwards in the next few videos we're going to be breaking down what some of these terms mean. So we'll look at network attached storage in a bit more detail, we'll be looking at what RAID is, what kind of setups might work for you and we'll also be looking at workflow as well which is the most important part of our everyday job. So making sure that we're naming files correctly that we're storing them in the correct places and most importantly that we're backing them up in multiple locations as well. So thank you very much for your time, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos and I'll see you on the next one.